welcome to another edition of the Amazing Art Show. Today we have a great project, Textured Canvases. And so basically your subject matter is going to kind of be up to you today. But our first part of our project is going to be building our canvas. And like I said, it's going to be a textured canvas. So very quickly, let's go through what we're going to need. We're going to talk about what a textured canvas is. And then we're going to get started on our project. So if you guys will grab newspaper and probably some tissue paper. You know that paper that your mom uses to wrap all those really cool presents and stuff? We'll need some of that. And you want to get really light colors. Don't get anything too dark. You need a really thick piece of um, paper. And like something like a mat board or even a piece of cardboard would work fantastic. You're going to need some watered down glue. So all you need to do is get some of your Elmer's glue and mix it with about half glue, half water. And it's just going to water it down a little bit. You're going to need some of this gesso. We have used this before in some of our other projects. It's just a really good sealer. You're going to need some of that. We will need some watercolor paints and we will need some, possibly some chalks. And then the really cool part is you're going to need some yarn. You might want to pull some feathers. You might want to pull some other, maybe little pieces that you can cut out of your cardboard, just different kind of various shapes. And then you're going to need your subject matter. And that's going to be up to you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our piece of thick kind of board, some kind of cardboard or something like that. Now, we're going to be making a textured canvas, which means, textured means it's the way something feels, or the way it looks the way something feels. So artists for centuries and centuries have always tried to paint something the way that it looks like it feels. So this is a very hard thing to do because it's hard to paint a feather and to see just how soft a feather looks and all of these little pieces that come off. And to really translate that onto your canvas is a really tricky thing to do. But texture is how something feels, all right? Sometimes that might be implied when you look at it and you can think to yourself how it would feel. That's kind of an implied texture. Today we are going to be doing an actual texture on your canvas. So we want to create some kind of a rough, kind of lumpy, bumpy kind of a surface. We don't want this smooth surface that we have. We always work on smooth surfaces. Today we are just going funky and we are going to make a really kind of textured, rough, kind of bumpy canvas. So the first thing that I want you to get is your watered down glue. So remember, half glue, half water. Okay, you're going to need a big brush and you're going to need to really glop this stuff on there. And you're just going to smear it all over the place. You kind of want to work in a section about as big as your hand because it kind of starts to dry pretty quick. You want to make sure you get plenty on the edges. And then you're going to get that newspaper. This is a great way to recycle, recycle, recycle. Any of those ads that mom and dad have thrown away are their newspapers. And you're going to get them. We don't want them to be smooth and flat. That's how we always work with things. So we're going to really crumble them up really, really good. And then you're going to unwrap them. We don't want to leave them that wadded up so that it's a big ball on our paper. We want to flatten it out a little bit, but we want those wrinkles to show. So when you put it down on your paper, you can kind of take your hands and kind of make some of those wrinkles. Because if you know, if you put it back down there again, you can actually smooth it down pretty flat. But we don't want that. We want to see those wrinkles and all those great texture that it's going to create. Now, once you get that down, you'll kind of look. You'll have some places that are sticking up. That means you don't have enough glue under there. So you need to get a little more glue just in those little places where you didn't get enough. And then you're actually going to take your brush. And I usually wait and kind of do this all at the end, but you can also kind of do it as you go. And you're just going to basically do your glue on top as well. So as you do this, remember that you're trying to create that rough, kind of crackled, weathered kind of looking texture. All right? Now, if you see any little places that are maybe bubbling up, that means you've got a little bit of air underneath there. You might want to get a pin and maybe poke it. Or sometimes you can just kind of roll your brush around and you can work out those air bubbles. Because one thing that I told you guys at the very beginning is not to get any tissue paper that was really brightly colored. Most tissue papers, they start out as a white piece of tissue paper and they're dyed. So the dyes that they put in those, I mean, they're a strong, very vibrant kind of dye. Sometimes those reds and the black tissue paper and the blue tissue paper. And what happens is, is whenever we put those on our pitcher and then we go to seal it with our gesso, 
it bleeds through the gesso. And we don't want that because we kind of want our canvas to kind of just have one color to it. We don't want those other colors bleeding through because we're going to be adding our own colors. We don't want those colors getting in our way. So make sure that if you've gotten tissue paper that you get light colors like pastels. Nothing too bright. We are going to cover your whole sheet of paper. When you get all finished, I want you to go back over it one more time with a good, really good coat. One other little trick before we kind of move on to the next part is as you are applying your glue, especially back over the top of everything, one thing that you can do, and you know, usually when we paint, we kind of do maybe up and down or side to side kind of strokes. Sometimes we do some feathery kind of strokes, but something that works really good for this project is if you will do your brush in a circle. And not only does it kind of work some of those air pockets out, but it also creates this circular kind of texture once that glue dries. So that's also kind of cool and something that I went back in and did on a couple of mine. And it's going to be very subtle. Subtle means it's not going to really stand out at you, but if you really look really, really good, you can see those little bitty kind of circular motions that your brush leaves along there. You are going to continue putting all of these layers on. You're going to cover your whole entire board. Do not forget to put those good wrinkles in that paper. And after you've covered everything, I want you to go back with your glue just to be safe, and I want you to do a nice, good coat of the glue over everything again. Don't forget that, you know, this is one of those times where you can roll your brush around and you get some really nice texture inside there. Now, after you've gone back over and you have coated everything, you've got a good coat on there, you're going to need to let it dry. But before you let it dry, this is the really cool part. This is the time to go get all that really cool kind of stuff around your house that you don't know what in the world to do with, and you can add it to your picture. Oh yeah, we're adding it all to our picture today. So, I collected some feathers, and I cut some shapes out of cardboard, just various kind of shapes, and I found some yarn, and all of this we can add to our picture. Now, you can do this part just by using regular plain old Elmer's glue, and you're just going to really put some glue on there. Just, you don't have to dot, dot, not a lot on this one. You can really just let that glue go. And you're going to glue your shapes down. Feathers, a little trickier, but go ahead and glop some of that glue on there. You gloppy gluers, this is the project for you. And kind of lay that on there as well. Um, I usually, whenever I do my shapes, I like to pick an odd number of shapes. So, you know, stick to those odd numbers, just kind of gives it a little bit of interest and variety in our work. So, I've got my shapes, I'm going to get glued on. Your string is another thing that can be a little bit tricky, but if you will just do a um, kind of a big kind of bead, is what we call it, or a line of glue, and then you're just going to lay your string down inside there. Your fingers are going to get a little messy, but I know you guys like that. Unless you're one of those kids in class goes, oh no, can I wash my hands? And I say, not until you're done. So you're just going to lay your string down there. If you want to do, you know, wavy lines or spiral lines with your string, it really, really adds a lot to your picture and looks really, really nice. So you're going to get that all down in there. All right, now I would continue, get all my things in here. Your feather might be a good idea with your feather to go back with some of that watered down glue and you're just going to kind of paint over it and you really got to give it a really good coating of glue. That's going to make your feather look a little weird, but if you'll kind of take your brush and kind of go with the flow of the feather, that means kind of go with the way that the little bristles are coming off of the feather, then you can kind of get it back into its original shape again. But you want to make sure that you really soak it with glue. And it might be a good idea, too, to maybe kind of put a piece of wax paper on here and put something heavy on here that'll keep that, that feather pushed down to your paper. And you're going to let that dry. You're actually going to let everything dry, all right? Okay, so you're going to put this aside. You're going to let it dry for a good 24 hours. As it dries, your board is going to start to, your board's going to get real wet with all this glue 
And so it's going to kind of start to constrict and bow and bend. And we don't really want that because that's going to make it even harder to do our project. So once it gets all dry, if you'll just kind of take your board and you can kind of bend it and manipulate it and you can get it flat again. It won't be perfectly flat, but it'll be really, really close. You'll just have to kind of bend it. You might bend it this way. You might bend it this way. Just kind of work with it and that it'll kind of release some of that glue and you'll be able to get it flat again. All right. Now, after we get this dry, we're going to have to coat it with gesso and it's going to have to dry again. This is not one of those projects you can just knock out in one day. It's got to have some dry time. So once you get your control finished, it's all dry. You're going to need a clean brush and you're going to need that gesso. And what this does, gesso is a really good sealer. And artists use this to seal their canvases before they start to paint. And that's basically what we want to do. We've got all these different colors on here. We've got newsprint, we've got newspaper ads on there. We don't want to see that. We want it to be all nice and clean. We want to seal it so that it is ready for us to paint. So you don't have to be stingy with this. You can really lay that gesso on there. So you're just going to really, really glop it on there and then you're going to start to spread it out. You don't want any gloppy messes in one particular area. You want to really kind of thin it out and you want to get a good even coat all the way over your artwork. Um, earlier we had talked about how it's a good idea to take your brush and you can do those little circle motions and it creates some nice texture. You can also do that with your gesso and it'll dry that way. It'll give you some nice texture. Now, you want to really work on getting around that, um, around your string, around your shapes, around your feather. You're going to have to really work hard to get into all of those little crevices because that's the really tricky part is getting inside there. So, one thing I've told my kids whenever we were working on this project is sometimes you have to take your brush and instead of painting like this, you have to kind of bounce your brush up and down. So, we just, we call it bouncing. And so we just kind of bounce if you've got a big kind of crack where maybe your paper has kind of come up or you've got a string. I've got a string underneath there. And so I just really have to get on both sides and if I've got some little places where maybe my paper's overlapping, I may have to bounce my brush. So I'm just going to keep going until I've covered everything. Once I've gotten everything covered, I'm going to let it dry. Once it is dry, it's when the real fun begins that's when you're going to need your subject matter that you're going to be painting today. So I'm going to finish getting mine all coated. I'm going to let it dry and when we come back we're going to be ready to get started on the work. Sure they're juicy and delicious. But did you know fruits like melon and mango are packed with vitamin A to help you see better? Eating fruit can also help make your teeth, skin, and hair healthy and strong. Can your food do that? Run, throw, think, eat better. Find out more at smallstep.gov. I am folding the pants. The pants are long. <laughs> Do they go on my head? Do they? Do the pants go on my head? No. They go on Everyday moments can become teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. Welcome back to the Amazing Art Show. We are ready to continue with our project. We have gotten our board. We have covered it with all of our paper. We put our shapes on there. We put our string on there. And we've put our gesso on. And we are ready now. We're all dry and we're ready to go. Um, if you've got any of these little edges that are sticking on there that you don't want on there, you can trim those off with your scissors. Or sometimes after you've gotten that gesso on there, they will tear off very nicely. So you want your edges nice and clean. And then we are going to be ready to pick whatever our subject matter is going to be for our drawing today. 
Now you're actually going to be drawing on the surface, which makes it a little more tricky because it's not smooth and nice. It's going to be really textured and fun. So, subject matter. Now remember at the very end, beginning of the show, I told you that you could pick any kind of a subject matter you'd like to. I am going to do my boots. I know you were wondering why in the world are her shoes sitting up there on that table. And it's not because I just decided to bring an extra pair of shoes to work today. No, I am actually going to be drawing my shoes today. So I have got my subject matter. You need to get whatever subject matter you're going to Maybe you want to use your, ten your tennis shoes or maybe you have a pair of boots you might like to sketch. Um, whatever it is, you need to get it and get ready, get your pencil and get your canvas, your textured canvas, and we are going to start sketching. Remember that whenever you start to sketch, you want to break it down into shapes if you need to, and a sketch is a very, very light drawing. We do that because if you make a mistake, it's a lot easier to go back over it a little bit darker and kind of fix your mistake, or if you need to erase, you can erase. So as you get started, kind of think about where you want to position things. For my boots that I'm going to be drawing, I'm going to kind of start more here, and I'm also going to include some things in my background as well. So I want to leave a little bit of room for those extra kind of things that I might want to add to my picture. So I'm going to start with my sketch. I am looking very hard at my subject matter. And something that kind of made me think about doing my boots was that we've created this, this textured canvas and, you know, leather has a texture to it as well. Sometimes it's kind of rough or sometimes it's smooth, depending on what kind of leather it is or what kind of a surface it's put on. And so that kind of got me thinking about an old pair of boots that you've worn for a long time and they're kind of wrinkled and weathered and they've been out in the rain and they've had mud on them. And so they're kind of worn and they've got all these interesting kind of wrinkles and textures in them. And that's what kind of got me thinking about, you know, our project. And so I decided that I would do my boots. And actually, my kiddos, we did this project not too long ago. And I had a bunch of the teachers all bring boots that they had. And we had some very interesting looking shoes. Because boots can sometimes be a little tricky to draw. Because, you know, you've got the heel of the boot, and then you have kind of the arch where the arch of your foot is, and then you've got the toe of the boot. Now, one thing about my boots is my boots are all black, and they have a stitching design in them that kind of looks like flames, but it's all the same color, so it's a little hard to tell. But I was telling my kids, and this is what I'd like for you guys to do, if you're going to be doing some kind of a boot for your subject matter, I want you to put some kind of a design on your boots. Now, as far as your design goes, you want to kind of think about your subject matter. If you're doing a boot, boot is typically kind of cowboy, cowgirl, western kind of look. So you want to have a western kind of theme on your boot. You wouldn't want like football on your boot or soccer because that really doesn't go together. So you really want to kind of think about something that would go along with the idea of a boot. So I gave you the suggestion of maybe cactuses or, um, you know, the coyotes howling at the moon or cowboys riding or roping or anything like that. So think about those types of things and think about maybe what you might like to add as far as your design goes on your boot. You don't want to do just one boot. We want to do both boots. So you need to kind of look and see where that other boot is and how you're going to have that other boot maybe kind of back in the distance a little bit. And it won't, you know, depending on how you have it laid out, the whole thing may not show. Some of it may run off your page because, you know, it may not all fit. We don't have just a huge canvas that we're working on today. So you're going to go ahead, draw those things in there, draw your design, and then I want you to come up with something that's going to go in your background. Now, in mine, I've done, I've done several, but the one that I'm going to show you at the very end today is um, kind of has a big flower. Georgia O'Keeffe is one of my favorite artists, and she has a way of looking at flowers and um, desert skulls and things like that in a way that nobody else had ever looked at things, and it was a very up-close kind of a view. So I added a very large flower in mine, and I'll show that to you in a little bit. But you could do, you know, you could do cactus, you could do 
some kind of a desert scene. You could do maybe cowboys in the background, a ranch. Make sure that your background goes along with kind of the design of your boot. You don't want it to be, you know, completely different from what it is that you're kind of working on, which is a southwestern kind of western theme. So I've already actually completed one of my sketches, so I'm going to trade this one out for my completed sketch. The next thing that we're going to need to do is you're going to need a Sharpie marker and you're going to just kind of trace back over your pencil lines. This allows you, if you have any kind of um, mistakes that you made or anything like that, it allows you just to just leave those mistakes there because you're going to be painting over everything. But this kind of allows you to go back over and it makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing. So just go back over that. Um, just kind of outline over everything. It's a little tricky when you get to these pieces of rope or um, string that we put on there, but just be patient. Just kind of go over it the best you can and get the marker as close to either side as you can. Um, my kids kept saying, oh my gosh, this is so hard to draw on this bumpy surface, but it was really lots of fun and the kids had a big time kind of figuring out how to maybe even incorporate some of their textures into their design. So that was really a lot of fun. So as you continue to outline everything on your boot, don't forget that second boot back there. Don't forget to do your designs as well. And don't forget also to do your background. This is your time if you have made any little mistakes to just kind of fix them quickly. And also another thing, remember that your boot is, you know, that your boot that you're sketching is a three-dimensional object. So the design on your boot, you may not be able to see the whole design because it might wrap around your boot. So you might also want to kind of think about that and um, think about how that would look because more than likely, the design would kind of wrap around to the front of your foot and also to the back of your foot. So think about that as well. Now I know that I mentioned to you earlier that um, you know I've already done several of these and this one that I'm working on right now I actually did a very large bird in the background just because I thought that that would be a great way to add a lot of really vibrant color. My birds kind of up on a little perch in my background. All right, I am just about ready. I've got my second boot still left to kind of outline, but I'm going to go ahead and stop and we're going to go ahead and start on adding our oil pastels. Now with our oil pastels this time, instead of filling it in all in like we had talked about, we are actually going to be leaving some of that texture showing. So I'm going to start kind of here on my cactuses, my cacti. <laughs> and you're just kind of filling it in. Usually, I ask you guys to fill everything in so that we don't see any of the white left showing. My kids always go, don't leave any of the white showing. But this time, boy, I got to surprise them. I was like, leave the white showing. And they all just go. So this time, leave some white showing because we're, we're really going to be looking at that texture. Now when you get up next to those shapes, it gets a little tricky. You kind of have to get your oil pastel in there as best you can. Where you can't get is okay, so don't worry about that. The reason why we're leaving some of this white area showing is because we're actually going to come back in and we're going to kind of do a wash on top of this, which means we're going to apply paint on top of the oil pastels. Now the oil pastels are made with an oil, our paints are water-based. The oil of the paints and the water, they don't mix. They don't like each other. So what's going to happen is the paint's going to stick in the places where we have white left showing, and it's going to repel the water in the places where we have oil pastel. So I think I'm going to do some blue. I really like this blue. Um, so I'm going to come in here. You're going to do your entire boot as far as coloring it in. And remember that we want these really, really colorful. So don't make it all the same color. Don't make it the regular old color that you see your dad's boots. We don't want boring boots. We want really nice, colorful boots. Also, this is a great time to think about your complementary colors. 
this is a great time to use those complementing colors because remember they complement each other and they work well together and they want they will really make your artwork pop. I know that we've talked about that before. We've also talked about the rule of three and whenever you are um, creating your artwork, if you decide to go with some kind of a color, you want to try to use it at least three places in your work because it gives it a really nice cohesive feel and works well together. So right now, I've got those green cactus and so my complement for green would be red. So I want to make sure that I use some red in my artwork somewhere. I actually think that instead of using it on my boot, at this moment I think I'm going to add it here on my bird. So I'm going to come in here, but remember I want to use it at least three places somewhere else in my picture. And that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be completely separate. It could be somewhere else on my bird. I might want to add some red. So I'm going to add some red in here on the tail. And then maybe somewhere on my boot. I could even come in here. I, have, I don't have it drawn with my um, Sharpie, but I could even add maybe just a little red cactus flower on there. And as I'm working, Remember, get as close as you can around those shapes and that string. You can even color on top of the, the string that we put on there. You're going to get everything finished. You're going to have your boots colored in. You're going to have your object in the background and maybe even some area down here that you might want to touch in with a little bit of your oil pastel. The next part of our project, we are going to get those watercolor paints that, we, that I told you about at the very beginning of the segment. And at this point, you're going you're gonna to pick a different color to go over it. So if I've done blue here on my boot, I don't want to do blue on top of it again. It's already blue. I want to pick something else different that's going to really make it stand out. So I might pick, I think I'm going to do a yellow over this blue. Now as I'm starting to paint, you're going to see how it's going to really get into those white cracks and crevices. And because we've used oil pastels and the oils are going to end up repelling the paint, it's going to puddle up kind of on your paper a little bit. And this is what we call the paint on, blot off. So you're going to paint on the color and then you're going to need a paper towel and you're going to blot it off. Sometimes you might end up having to paint over it a couple times to really get the colors nice and bright. But you're going to paint on, you're going to dab off. And you're going to continue to do this for your whole picture. Now I've actually got a picture that I've finished. I've got my finished product. And I'd like to show this to you guys at this time. And this is my finished picture. Now, one other thing that I did, because we're just about out of time for today, is I went back with some of my chalks. And I just, in a couple few little places, I just went in and rubbed a little bit of extra color or if I wanted something to really pop. So on these little, this cactus plant over here, I added some more kind of color in there. And this is definitely something that you did. But if you look really close, you can see this really fabulous texture that we get. You can just barely see your string because you've, you've really camouflaged it in there with that paint. You can see all of this texture that you get whenever you've used your oil pastels and then the paint goes on top, it really kind of pops and makes that really interesting and a really great thing to look at. Don't forget about blending some of your colors. Think about those warm colors, a sunset. This would be a great time to bring in some of those sunset colors. Today's art quote is, nobody sees a flower, really. It's so small, we haven't time. And to see takes time. Like to have a friend takes time. Our quote of the day was by Georgia O'Keeffe. I hope that you guys had fun today working on your textured canvases. Now go out there and make some amazing art.